Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're watching from around the planet right now. And welcome to Birth 2012. This is proudly brought to you by the Shift Network and the Agape Spiritual Center. Now today is December 21st, 2012. Can we believe it? We're right here, right now. We have over 40 countries streaming into our birth2012.com web platform. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, countries like, uh, well, right now we're going to be coming to you live in locations around the world, places like Australia, Egypt, India, Stonehenge, the Mayan pyramids in Mexico, uh, Peru, Guatemala, China, Japan, Britain, Brazil, Jerusalem, and more, all part of this live broadcast that will go nonstop as we unite all the celebrations around the world. So my name is Stephen Dynan, and I am just so delighted to be here with you at the birth moment for a new era. And it is because we're declaring it so, and because our beloved pioneer, Barbara Marks Hubbard, has said, has had this vision to say, let's declare a due date for the new humanity. And why not use the Mayan calendar transition as the marker point and say, you know what? It is now time to create a whole new world, a holy world that is filled with grace, built on peace and sustainability, and filled with health and prosperity and love. So we've been celebrating with love around the world. And that's why I wanted to begin with the love of my life, Deva Haley, who is also gonna welcome you. A big round for Deva Haley. Thank you. So I just wanna welcome everyone and really give a huge shout out to all the people who have made this day possible as I reflect myself on what is the biggest lesson. It's about interdependence. There have been so many people, so many organizations that have all come together to make this possible, from our alliance with Unity Churches to the Unify Movement to the people in the parking lot who are helping us out when our car broke down the other night. We are realizing we cannot do it alone, and the beautiful thing is we are not doing it alone. So thanks to each of you for playing your role and for bringing this new era alive for all of us on this planet. Amen. Well, I want to bring up, without further ado, a woman who has traveled here yesterday from Australia, launching this global birth movement from the other side of the world with Theater of Our Birth. Some of you might have seen it online. We'll have it on repeat. Barbara Marks Hubbard is truly a global treasure. She is, articulates the, the, the spirit of evolution with the mother's love and, and great joy at bringing us into our full potential. She has been audacious enough to run for vice president and audacious enough to envision a global birthday. And it just so happens to coincide with her personal birthday. So 83 years old and rocking it out, Barbara Marks Hubbard. God, humanity, we made it. <laughs> you know how Michael always says agape? I'm saying humanity, we made it. Yeah. We made it through. There are enough of us now. And lots of us are right here at agape, which is the spiritual center of the planetary birth. <laughs> It is from this spirit, spirit of agape that the birth of humanity has first been announced to the world. And I know that this announcement is being carried throughout the nervous system of the planet. And that nervous system is our global brain, mind, heart. And today, it is being infused with enough love to open its collective eyes and to know that everyone on Earth Everyone on earth in whose heart is a yearning for love, for creativity, for oneness, for care, they are with us now. And just let's take a moment to bless the entire planetary baby, infant humanity being born. Thank you, God. It's a time to be glorious. 
glorious. It's a time to be glorious. To realize, like Barbara said, there is no separation. That we're all made glorious. Everybody's made glorious. Everybody's made glorious. wondrous occasion this is. We are blessed by the perfection of this present moment. And in such perfection, we are open to the divinity that is our birthright. So I'd like to offer a blessing drawn from the Kamaska tradition of my peoples from Heart Island, from Peru, and the Pacocuna lineage of earth-honoring shamanic service work. Kai Pachiwaiku. Kai Kintuta, Kai Despachuta. So may this blessing be a remembering of our planetary family, born of love and spiritual awakening. Spirit of the living God, life of all life, light of all light, fertile dark mystery, God becoming in the sacred adventure of evolution. We are grateful to be your chosen ones, planetary pilgrims and co-creators with you on the edge of evolution. This is our moment. We are the ones flaring forth as a flame of love in holy communion with all creatures, all continents, planets, galaxies, time, and space. Great mystery, one spirit, birther of the cosmos, God in evolution. We place our faith and our trust 
in you, birthing creation from within as this planetary Pentecost. May this be the ground of all that from which our acts of love grow. And together I invite us to say, Amen. 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 So be it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The prayer and the blessing for today is really going to be a method. It's a request from all of us to practice this. The birthing of a new era in a beautiful world requires no algae, no anger, lust, greed, attachment, or ego. And if we can reduce that, we'll have the kind of world that we're celebrating and the kind of world that we wish for. And just for this moment, let go and forget. Forget your name. It's not important right now. Forget your gender. You're not a man or a woman. Forget the role that you play in your titles. Let them go. Let them go. Even let go of your religion, language, and your body. Ask the self, how would I feel without a name, a gender, a role, a title, a body? Free, pure, at peace. And who would think of me? God. And who would I think of? God. As I accumulate this practice, I will create a new world. I invite you to turn within and continue to be aware that right where you are right now is all of the power, all of the presence, and all of the love that there is. That in truth there never is any distance nor any separation between us and the great God of the universe, the great love of the universe, the great intelligence, the great beauty, the great elegance. The great order, it is everywhere in its fullness. And by means of us, it's seeking to express itself more completely. So as we take this day, this moment, with the divine intentionality to become more and to never less than our true self, obstacles, hindrances of perception that dissolve, and we begin to see the world that God sees. We begin to see the beauty. We begin to see the good and the love that is now emerging because the condition is ripe. Just as the oak tree is already within the acorn and when the condition is ripe, the oak tree emerges. This new world is here already. And the condition for its ripening and for its manifestation is happening in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, in our underlying intentionality right here and right now. And so the prayers that have been uttered, the intentionality that we have brought to this moment, oh, it is magnified. Our group soul doth magnify the Lord, the great law of life, and something wonderful.
wonderful is happening. Something magnificent is taking place. Something beautiful is rising up through us in this moment. And the celebration that's happening cosmically is now being localized in our hearts, our minds, our souls. And what do we do? We give thanks. We celebrate. We enter into the realm of soulful gratitude and we let it be. We let it be. We let it be. Saying, and so it is. So be it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marianne Williamson. Hello. Hi, hi, everybody. So theoretically, happy birthday to a new era in human history, yeah? Uh, somebody once pointed out uh, a fact in nature that I find fascinating, and that is how a chicken knows that it's time to hatch. How does a little chicky know that it's time to start pecking its way out of the egg? I'd never thought about it before. Well, scientifically, what happens is that when it is time for the chicken to hatch, when it is time for the chicken to be born into the world, a noxious gas fills the inside of the eggshell. It is literally dying to be born. It literally must exit out of the eggshell and go out into that next phase of its existence. And it does seem that that's a little bit like what is happening to humanity. There have been other times in history. There have been the times of the Renaissance, the times of the Enlightenment, times when humanity began to think differently. You have a different world when you at one time think that the sun revolves around the earth and then you come to realize that the earth revolves around the sun. It's a different world when you go from thinking that the earth is flat to realizing that it's not. It's a different world when you think that illness just comes from rumors in the air and then come to understand that it comes from germs. It's a different world when you have the mass of humanity knowing that no matter what they do, they will be serfs or they will be slaves. They will simply be in service to an order outside themselves over which they have no control. And then they come to the realization that heaven doesn't have to be just something after we die, but that they can be in control of their own destinies. And the profound revolutions, both in this country and around the world, that came from that idea that humanity could be in charge of its own destiny. And this is simply one more in one of those amazing magic moments of human history when we go from one way of looking at the world to another. And it's a very, very important thing what is happening here today, both here at Agape and around the world. When people claim it, when people stand in it, when people invoke the boldness that Stephen Dynan was talking about, when people embrace the vision that Barbara has been talking about, when people are willing to stand in that space and say, this era shall be born and it shall be born through me. Because as my friend Mary Morrissey once said to me, God cannot do anything for us that he cannot do through us. And so we do not just passively, you know, it's exciting to me as a woman, there were so many ages when we didn't get to contribute our voices. And so without our voices. There was not our language, our imagery. And so now, just as Neil was saying, women's intuition has been borrowed. Now this imagery of birth has been borrowed. That's wonderful that men as well as women are claiming birth as an imagery. But there's something that perhaps we need to explain to the men. It hurts like hell. <laughs> and so while we're going through all of this wonderful invocation of new birth, let us not kid ourselves. Labor is hard. And we're going to do more just have to invoke our boldness. We're going to have to do more than just invoke a vision. We're going to have to invoke our courage. Because let me tell you something. When we go out there in our way and we say we want there to be peace on the streets, the National Rifle Association is not going to just say, oh, okay. <laughs> and when we say we want there to be sustainability, the oil and gas industries are not going to just say, oh, okay. And when we say we want to wage peace on this earth, as our primary problem-solving modality, the military-industrial complex is not going to just say, oh, okay. And that's an important thing for us to remember today.
Because the shadow side, I think the shadow side of, of our movement sometimes is that we keep ourselves infantilized. We keep ourselves infantilized by sometimes, and I've noticed among my colleagues, they're not that way off stage. Off stage, they know what's going down. Just like when we're out of these rooms, we know what's going down. We need to have more of a conversation about what's really going down in these rooms. Because it's necessary, it's necessary in us to, because we need to invoke more than boldness. We need to have more than vision. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna need some courage in the days ahead. Because if you're going to stand for true sustainability, and you're going to stand for true peace, and you're going to stand for all of the things that people are talking about here today, in these rooms, everybody's going to applaud you. But these rooms are not the only rooms in this world. These rooms are places where when we talk about true, true, true sustainability, and true, true peace on earth, and true, true, true love is the bottom line, it is important that we will be applauded in these rooms because we are going to need, just like a boxer has to go back to the corner every once in a while. We are going to need to know that we have the support system of our community. We're going to need to know we have the collaborators in this community. But we are also going to need the people here in this room among us, our true community and our true support system. And when we make real what we're talking about here today and we go out into the world and they spit at us and they criticize us and they humiliate us, the people in this room we will surround each other and we will say, you go, you go, I am with you. I got your back, I got your side. I got you to the left and I got you to your right. I got you in front of you and I got your back behind you. And there are angels who are posted all around you because we are giving birth to something together. And even though birth is difficult, once it's done and once that new baby, that new life is in your arms, you don't even remember that you went through it. But let's not kid ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Before Jesus resurrected, he was crucified. Before the Jews were delivered to the promised land, they were slaves in Egypt. Before any era of humanity has given birth to what was possible, they had to first go through the struggles of what had been before. And any time any of us individually in our own lives, in our own personalities, and in our own hearts give birth to something new, we have to die to who we were. What has happened now is that the time has come. I'm not saying that you and I are perfect, but I'm saying that history seems to be saying we're good enough. We're good enough. It's not that you're perfect or you're perfect or I'm perfect, but if you put it all the things that you've accomplished in your life together with all the things that you've accomplished in your life, all the things I've accomplished, and by accomplishment I mean where you used to be weak, you're strong now, and where you used to be harsh, you're gentle now, and where you used to be self, uh, self just putting yourself down all the time, you are now risen up in self-confidence. And we know that we don't have to be totally perfect because my brother is to my left and my sister is to my right. And the people who are my true friends are right in front of me, beckoning me forward and the people who I know are loyal and will not dismiss me or betray me are to my back, then we know we're ready for birth. This is the real thing. This is not just, oh, let's all be bold. This is all, let's go kick ass. Thank you very, very much. God bless you, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. We all have this this thing, but the artists, the musicians, the, the shamans, I mean, they come to remind us who we are, of who we are and how we roll, how we're made, how we come together. And when somebody does it really, really well, like Jamie Lula does, you know that sense that we're different just kind of goes into heart and soul. You know, we don't have to work so hard at becoming one because we can feel it in our soul. And that's what, that's the magic of real music medicine. So at this time, I want us to put our hands together for an amazing being. His name is Jamie Lula. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us 
thoughts only sky Imagine all the people Living for today Imagine there's no countries It isn't hard to do No need for greed or hunger We are a brotherhood and sisterhood of men Imagine all the people Living life in But I know I'm not the only one Cause I know this day they all join us And the world is one Imagine no possessions I don't know if I can No need for greed and hunger But I know I'm not the only one Cause I know that this day they'll all join us And the world will be as one Oh, you may say I'm a dreamer, I'm a dreamer, I'm a dreamer, no Cause I know I'm not Vision, got a vision for our world. Imagine, 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 imagine. Oh, imagine, 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 imagine. Will you sing with me? You may say, hey, I'm a dreamer. I know someday they join us And the world is one
got a vision, yeah. a great heart and a great message. Please welcome Neil Donald Walsh. Thank you, Stephen. I don't know how you follow something like that. It starts with God, it seems to me. Or whatever our private notion around God is. That essence, that ineffable essence that we call the divine, it feels like it starts there. And so, now nearly 20 years ago, I. I had a conversation with God, which we are all having all the time. I simply didn't know it until then. I called it something else. I called it intuition or a lucky guess or inspiration. Sometimes I even called it women's intuition, borrowed. <laughs> but it was for me what it is for all of us, a conversation with God. And I got down on my knees at a dark moment in my life, and I asked God, what is it I don't understand? Tell me what it is. And God said, very simply and very directly, you simply don't know who you really are. You imagine that you're some biological entity, some biological creature. Like the birds and the bees and the whales and the dolphins and another biological life form, like a tree. But what if you were more than that? What if you were not simply the physicality of you, but what if you were in fact a spirit, a soul with a body, and if that were true, a whole new set of questions would arise for you. Like, what am I doing here? What's this all about? What is my purpose? What is my function? And I've been looking at those questions ever since. And I've been guided along the way because I felt lost like a lot of us have felt. I felt lost in that whole process. Even as millions of people now around the world are feeling this sense of rebirth, beginning again, but how do I get where I want to go? Where are the steps? And so we look to others, we look to each other, in fact, to give us guidance to give us inspiration along the way. I've had the blessing of having found such wonderful guidance from extraordinary sources of inspiration in my life. One of them, several of them, are sitting here. People like Barbara Marks Hubbard. People like Marianne Williamson. People like Jack Canfield. People like this man of magic who changes everything the minute he walks into a room Michael Bernard Beckwith. But I thought to myself, I wish, have you ever had this feeling when Michael's up here bringing his magic, have you ever thought, I wish I could be just a little bit like that. I want to be like Michael. And Michael's message is, you are. We all are. And so the opportunity for us, it seems to me, as we step into this new era, 
to which Barbara has given birth is for all of us to step into our Michaelness. <laughs> which is to say, our divinity. Because what's extraordinary about people like that is that they don't deny it in themselves and they see it in us. That's what makes people like that change the world. Now, our opportunity is to do the same. What would it be like in these next days, weeks, and months ahead as we move into this new era if we all decided to accept our divinity, to share it in such a way that everyone else whose life we touch saw theirs as well, to make of our life a ministry that everyone whose life we touched would know who they really are, would that change the world or what? And so that's our opportunity. That's our invitation from life itself, it seems to me, as we move into this new era to which we all, all around the world, have given birth. And yet, as we step into our sense of the divine, we have to ask ourselves, what does that look like? What is that? I asked God, tell me in one paragraph the message you would bring to the world about divinity. And God said, I can give it to you in five words. God's message to the world in five words. You've got me all wrong. I, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to punish you. I am only going to bless, bless, bless you and then invite you to experience the blessing, to be the blessing, and to share the blessing. That's the invitation. So I'm so happy to have a chance to be with you here today with these extraordinary human beings, all of these extraordinary human beings in this room, and all of the extraordinary human beings around the world. As we accept and receive the invitation, as we become and we send the invitation to everyone whose life we touch to be what we were destined to be and to make of our entire life a conversation with God. Thank you. It is a delight now to introduce the next performer, a woman who I originally saw. I was with my friend Andrew Harvey, who has had much to do with bringing her to audiences such as this one. She is not only a marvelous performer as a dancer, but she is dancing in a shamanic, spiritual, ceremonial way. Banasha El Sayed is beautiful on every level. She will take you to a place where perhaps many of us have never been before through the auspices of dance. <laughs> Chavem in Zaroki, Heval in Men Shevab Stera.
This is really a unification, not only of people around the world, but really of different religions, different cultures, people together celebrating one planet, one possible future as there's the birth 2012 happening. Right now, we'd like to take you to something that has just happened, Glastonbury, UK. Uh, it is their winter solstice celebration that happens there every year. But this, of course, the festival is especially powerful because this is the year uh, that uh, people are celebrating a whole new era, not just uh, another year to come. Uh, Glastonbury, of course, is the, the place of legends. Uh, the King Arthur and the Holy Grail is said to have uh, taken place there in, uh, in legendary history. It's also the place where uh, many people gather every year as part of a religious pilgrimage. Take a look here. Open up your heart. Hello, it's Dana here from Positive TV and Hello Birth 2012 and Unify.org and all the millions of people who are gathered right now on the 21st of December 2012 to celebrate the moment of the winter solstice. In this incredible time of the shifting paradigm, and some would say the end of the world, and I would say the beginning of something really special happening on this planet. So See, really, I just, I tell you, it's a feeling, you know what I mean? And the feeling right now, being up here right now, is, is, is so enchantedly fantastic. You know what I mean? The whole, actually, I mean, this whole time, you know, I really believe something is happening. And I think I'm ready, I'm welcome. It's all happening. Um, it is happening, it's happened. It's brilliant. New dawn, yeah. new era, you know. <laughs> new sense of awareness for everybody. It's very exciting times. You're watching a live broadcast called Birth 2012. It's coming to you from the Agape International Spiritual Center, but it's broadcasting out to the entire world. We're bringing to you live broadcasts of ceremonies and celebrations around the world from 40 different locations. The world. Uh, and I just think it's absolutely amazing being able to see what's happening in these other countries everywhere. I mean, when I'm watching these interviews with these people on tape, it feels like it could be someone here in America because it feels like true soul family. People People resonating to the same message, coming together with the same message, and um, streaming it all into one place. I want to invite the welcoming committee, which has helped hold this space for the birth with Barbara, to join us on stage right now. <laughs> we have, we did have women on the welcoming committee, but let us enter in as we join in this this semicircle here that we are linking also with all of you and linked to your brothers and sisters around you. Well, you know, people said on December 21st, nothing happened. But what they didn't notice, it was the day before we gave birth to a universal humanity. That's what happened. <laughs> so it would be good to send out the word to all the people who were waiting for the end of something to say you're quite right because something new was born the next day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying something's over. Yes, something is over. What's over is separation. <laughs> What's over is the illusion that we're not connected with each other on one planet, on one Earth, born into a universe full of life. That's over. What's beginning is we are a generation of humanity who loves the earth, who loves each other, who loves giving birth to our own creativity and that which is coming forth from us. And we are so proud and happy to be here at the very moment when humanity first noticed that it was being born as one whole good planetary body. <laughs> As spirit is rising up through all the great mystic saints and seers of humanity, but the great surprise of the planetary Pentecost, it's in every one of us alive. 
and the walls that separate religions from religions are going down. Now, and the next thing about the planetary Pentecost is the fact of empathy which used to be coalesced in small groups for each other, has suddenly been let loose on the earth. There is nothing to stop us from caring for each other now. And whenever anyone's hurt, we all know it anyway. So we can't ever even ignore it because our nervous system our very planetary newborn baby nervous system that has never been completely turned on has turned on now through all our social media, through our Facebook, our Twitter, our but billions and billions of cell phones. And you know the message they're getting right now, live, if this is live birth, they're getting, we love you. Can you imagine the love, the energy, the creativity in this room times thousands, times millions. So let us create now, in this time and in this place, in this place that we call all the world, in all the hearts of all the people everywhere, let us create now a marker in time, a specific moment that we will never forget, that will change everything because we said it would. And let's open our hearts, engage our souls, enter the highest place of our minds, calling that moment of our birthing now. it now. Call it forth. Call it us. So continuing in that sacred silence of yes, here, now. Yes, here, now. Yes, here, now. In. Yes, here, now. Yes, here, now. Here, now. Let us all hold this moment tenderly in our hearts as we move forward, knowing that it's calling us each into a new way of being. I am the uh, father of three boys, and two of them I delivered at home. I took a midwife in class so I could do that, and I wanted to be part of that miracle. And the level of presence that you've all called us here to, I've never been more present in my life. And in this moment, I'm just so aware of the preciousness of what we've created and of being co-creating that I would invite all of us to come present with that same love that we have for our own child and bring that to the whole world, to everyone we meet. And I feel like we all have that responsibility to be that responsible for this new birth, to treat it with the same preciousness and magic that I remember in those moments. And so it's an honor to be here and to be present with you and to, to love you and to love each of us and all the parts of us and to, to honor that co-creative process that will continue beyond this moment as we, in a sense, parent each other with love and with compassion and with empowerment. The Pentecost a coming together of five, a uniting of earth, water, air, fire, and soul, just like our human hand. 
is not a hand that has fashioned the masterpieces, the aesthetic wonders, the extraordinary temples of veneration and worship that still dazzle pilgrims across the world. These hands are makers of beauty, bestowers of grace. This opposable thumb is indispensable to their usefulness. The pinky, your infancy, the ring finger, your young adulthood when you get married and begin to aspire for those things of the world. Your middle finger, the culmination of your career and aspirations, the apex of your success, the index finger, your elderhood, that's why it's a little shrunk. <laughs> Yet the hand would not be what it is without the opposable thumb. It is beholden to this fifth element, to the soul body, to great spirit, to creator creatrix. Hence, we must always bow and allow the thumb to be above the rest of the fingers and hence bring your hand in that humbleness to your heart and then only open it to guide the way. To pick up on a theme that Barbara introduced a second ago, um, as we know, a 26,000 year long cycle ended yesterday which means this is the beginning, at the very least, of 26,000 years more. In this moment, we are bringing into the world a consciousness that does seek and will make the material plane of reality work for all. We are leaving and have left the consciousness of scarcity. We are entering the consciousness of abundance. And in that consciousness, every single one of us knows that every single human being on the planet is entitled by right of birth to adequate food, shelter, medicine, potable water, freedom from institutional, isolated, and collective violence, and non-gender-based education. Those aren't extras, that's what our birthright is. And now, we're going to create it that way. And in doing that, the ultimate reflection of our collective destruction, that we have almost destroyed this beautiful golden home of ours, this blue marble in space, that we have brought it to the point that we have, now we will heal. I bow to you, my beloved child. I bow to you at this moment that you have come with all the capacities that we need. That you have come with the healing powers that we so need. That you have come with the joy that we so need. That you have come with the inspiration, with the love, with the courage, with the determination. And you, you are walking into the garden of the future. And we bless you and we celebrate you. Your time has come. So be it. <laughs> so I'm here really to introduce uh, someone we're very proud to have, um, author of Motivating the Masses, Chicken Soup for the African American Soul, as well as The Secret, and someone who's really committed to supporting you and doing things that you've never 
done before or have never even dreamed of. It's a great privilege and an honor to be able to introduce Lisa Nichols. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I am back home again. It's always so wonderful to be here and to be with you. And on this day, you know, yesterday I was on Good Morning LA and they said, what do you think about the end? I was like, well, let's just talk about the beginning. How about that? What, did you plan what you would do the day after? Just in case. Just in case, did you plan what you're gonna do? So I'm excited to be here to talk about possibility, um, to be in the space of some of the most great minds, people who I've learned from, uh, to stand here and add a little spice to it, as you know I, I'm gonna do. You know, as we talk about, and I love what Marion said, we talked about, you know, the possibility, but then we look at the practical. So I just wanna say, since you're already gonna be here, since we're not gone, Right? Since you're already going to be here, we might as well do something. Right? We might as well be better than we've ever been before, right? We, we might as well. You've heard me say, if you've heard me speak before and hear it, I call this my home. You've heard me say, say yes, yes. But I've never told you why. See, the first yes, and I, I had to begin to say yes twice, because the first yes was to me. But the second yes was to God. Because my yes to what I was going to do was always small. I said, I want to motivate L.A. <laughs> the second yes was to God by saying, and whatever you have me do, I'll get out of the way. So yes, yes isn't just a cliche. It's something that I constantly say to remind myself, I'm going to say yes to that that I don't know. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. And if you feel your yes, yes, then you say your yes, yes. Since we're already going to be here, you know, you didn't go anywhere. Since we're already going to be here, are you willing to be unapologetic about your greatness? Yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. Since you're already going to be here, are you willing to be unstoppable? Yes, yes. Since you're already here, you're here already. Since you're already going to be here, are you willing to be untamed at times? Yes. See, we have a tendency to ask for permission. Can I be great? Can I be brilliant? Can I be beautiful? Can I be brilliant and beautiful? Can I be? We ask the world for permission when I think in this new birth, in this new season, why don't we give the world notice? Yes, yes? I just need to put you on notice that since I'm already here, because we already here, I'm going to spend some time in my fabulosity. I don't know. Yes, yes? See, I tried out doubt. I tried out worry. I tried out fear, as my brother Jack said. I tried out being more consumed with your perception of me than I was of my commitment to myself. I tried all that out. But since I'm still here, you know, we're still here, I'm going to try out letting my genius out. I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try not shrinking when I walk in a room so other people can't handle my greatness. Yes, yes? I'm just going to walk in the room and just assume you can handle my light. Yes, yes. I mean, since we're already here, you're here still. So why don't we try, why don't we go this next round not shrinking for anyone, anything, and any thought? Why don't we say yes, yes to God? Why don't we say yes, yes to our greatness? So if you're committed to being something you've never seen before, say yes, yes. Doing something you've never done before, say yes, yes. yes, yes. Looking a way that you've never looked before at the world. Yes, yes. Singing like you've never sung before. Yes, yes. Dancing like you've never danced before. Yes, yes. Loving like you've never loved before. Yes, yes. I mean, you already here. You, since you're here, why don't you be radical? Why don't you see what, is, what does it feel like to move from comfort complacency to radical. Well, what does it feel like? What does it feel like to say, I'm going to act as if today is that day. I'm going to live as if tonight is that night. I'm not waiting to let my champion out. I'm going to let it out today. And if I should get tomorrow, just in case, since I'm here, I'll do it again tomorrow. I, I just stopped by as your sis. I just stopped by as your sis to shake you up a bit to let mediocrity be mildly to significantly uncomfortable for you in any form. I just stopped by. 
I stopped by to say, we've been waiting on you to show us how to be unapologetic about your champion. And that when you do it, you give me permission to do the same. And so I need you to no longer play small. There's a reason why you're in this room, a chosen few. Because you got the message directly. So since you're here, you might as well. Since you're here, you might as well. My grandmother says, she's 83 years old, my grandmother says, baby, when you get my age, you're supposed to sit in your favorite rocking chair and tell the story of your life. But when you're your age, you're supposed to make sure the story is gonna be good to tell. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. So I close with this. And you've heard me say it before some of my friends, the next time you walk in a room, don't you dare dim your light. Don't you dare shrink so those around you won't feel a little uncomfortable with your presence. Don't you dare modify who the creator has made you to be. Don't you dare turn your wattage down from 159 to 79 so people can handle you. When you walk into the room, you keep your wattage up. You turn it up higher, and if they cannot handle your light, don't dim your light. Hand them some shades. I love you. 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 How's everybody doing today? I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I just love being here because it's a safe place to just be. And I just want to say thank you for gathering to do that. I have the pleasure of introducing someone um, that you are familiar as being an actor. You probably know him from La Bamba or NYPD Blue. He also happens to be an activist. He sits on the board of, of many different foundations, including the National um, Hispanic Foundation, or National Foundation for Hispanic Arts and Creative Arts Communities and all that sort of thing. But I've known Esai for 30 years. He has been a connector to mainstream and the rest of the world to the Hispanic community since I've known him. In fact, the first time I met Esai, I don't even know if you remember this, I was shooting a film, uh, a TV series called Fame. I knew from that day on that Isai Morales was going to be a force to be reckoned with in this world, and he was going to be bringing himself full on everywhere he went and encouraging everyone else in his presence to do so. So it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Mr. Isai Morales. <laughs> No, don't let go Cause after all, it's what you know How does it feel or make you grow? Some pain can teach us how to flow Toward each other And after all is said and done You never hurted anyone You lived your life and now you're done There's no one out to hurt you now. Yes, you gave your all, now give it all the more. And let us know what you're about. Cause when you throw your love away, there's nothing left for us to say. These guys, whether they're ready or not, are <laughs> called Los
We uh, get to be the center of something extraordinary that's happening around the planet because more than 40 live events are happening in celebration of the new cycle, the new era, the birth. That's why we call this Birth 2012. Uh, right now, as we talk, I want you to be able to listen to some of the music that is really the soundtrack for what's happening around the planet because we have some Native American music right now uh, that's coming to you over the network. seeing a celebration as a musical performance. Let's watch together and listen. Will you wrap me in a cloak, When you say your goodbye For my heart broke in two When I lost
Podcast, streaming live from Chitsun Itza. As you can see, it's an amazing celebration of people just really letting the energy flow. You've got the drums pumping and the dance moving. Wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling out to the whole wide world. Help me scream and shout that we want peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for some people who's looking for peace. Maybe together we could make the war cease. Now we can send mankind to the moon. And we can reach to the bottom of the sea. That's why it's really kind of baffles me. That we can all end wars and bring peace. Welcome back. I'm just so amazed by all the music that's coming in from all the different countries. And now we're actually teeing up some live music videos as well for you guys to see, all with inspirational content and messaging through the lyrics. Yeah, you can't talk about the pulse of the planet without having a chance to listen to the beat of the music from around the world. And that's what's happening here. Music that has been created, that has been inspired, that has been uh, put together in such a way that it's designed to celebrate the new era of our planet. So welcome everyone. That was the end of part one of our Birth 2012 celebration. Uh, you're welcome to turn on your videos and join conversation if you'd like. Um, brought back a lot of memories for me, I'll say that. Um, it was um, quite an experience. Um, you know, we started the day out, I don't know if I mentioned before, with Barbara Marks Hubbard in Australia because that's where, uh, you know, the, where the, the uh, <laughs> Birth 2012, that was the Eastern Edge, we called it. And um, then we followed that uh, back to the uh, West Coast of the United States. Uh, a little story is that um, the barber was so hyped up after our celebration in Australia, she couldn't get to sleep on the plane. And we were afraid, oh my goodness, she doesn't have any- uh, she doesn't have any, um, can't, she has to get some sleep. We've got, we're going to do another 48 hours. So we'll just say that someone said, why don't you take one of these? And I'm not going to say what it was or, but, who, it was. or who it was, <laughs> but it like totally knocked her out. And we land in LA and we're like, wake up, Barbara, wake up, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I just want to open it up for any kind of conversation. If anyone, you know, did it bring back Anything for you? Do you think we've, have we moved on? Have we been birthed? Is the baby out? Are we in our infancy? Or are we still in the labor pains? Uh, just want to go ahead, Rob, and just yeah, unmute Robin, yourself right, and join right in. Right there in the heart of it also. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I, um, I never saw this. And I'm just so amazed. And um, I just want to make a comment on our awakening because I helped produce this and I had no idea what it was. Like, uh, first of all, my mind was on a million things. I mostly help, you know, lodging with the staff and a lot of logistics. Um, uh, but I had no idea it was this amazing thing that I just saw. I just saw pieces of it. And um, I didn't get the tape, so I'll have to ask Stephen for it. But um, quite miraculous. And um, just what really struck me was what Barbara said, or no, Marianne said, birth is painful. And I think that we may be thinking, oh, this isn't happening fast enough. It should happen like years ago, closer to the 12, 2012. I know Stephen put out a projection around 2020. He had, you know, so, um, you know, 2022. Um, and then Chief, uh, is it Phil? Chief Phil said by 2033, there will be peace on earth. That's no question. He doesn't know how, and we probably have choices whether we want to get there through, you know, more pain or or more compassion and joy. But um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just thank you so much for showing this. I can't stay too much longer after 6:30, but um, um, uh, I'll keep my thing on. And I have to do something else, but I might be able to come back. But I just want to say. Um, yeah, I mean, I just didn't have the awakening I have now to even see what this was to the extent, and that's amazing. And you know me, I was helping all of you with the courses yeah. and I was always there and I heard what was going on and I believed it and everything, but, but, but that's where the hope is because I, as a person have 
gained some sort of new perspective over these years. And I imagine, you know, I'm, I'm just one person. I imagine a lot of people have that receptivity to this messaging and what that, you know, that all represented. So that's what I have to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Uh, Robin, if you should, if you should find some additional copies laying around in a box someplace, I would <laughs> dearly love to have I, I don't have it. I don't even have it. The, 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 the you talked to Steve Dynan? I could talk to him. I, I didn't even think of a, having a copy. I didn't even know it was this beautiful production. So yeah, I'll see what I can do, but yeah. Thank uh, you. Robin, Remember my come thing. back uh, next week. This is just part one. There's another mm -hmm. 75, mm -hmm. yeah, 75 minutes uh, next, uh, uh, next week. So come back same time. Yeah, thank both of you so much. You guys, uh, you know how much I, I love and admire you and just bringing this to us, this group here, there's something special right now happening with this group here that we just were, were so honored to see this. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. We love you too. Hello, uh, welcome, Marion and Glenn. From Kauai and Janet had her hand up and then we'll go to Pamela. And yeah, um, Wonderful. And uh, yeah, they're hanging loose out there in Kauai. <laughs> Tough duty, guys. But so go I ahead, Janet. Well, I am just so glad I decided to come on here tonight. I was kind of figuring out, okay, can I really put aside the time to do this? Because believe me, my plate is full right now and I'm really very tired. But um, I just wanted to... Um, let me see how I put this. I'd like to invite everyone who's here, who's interested, to check out our educational foundation, nonprofit foundation, Planetary Peace, Power, and Prosperity website. I'll put it in the, the chat, but it's planetary. I'll just put it in the chat and yeah. I, I will. Okay. Uh, we filed articles of incorporation in the state of Florida in on April 17, 2020. I'm working with a very um, amazing core group of creators and co-creators. And what I personally have hold of right now, and I know I've got hold of it, is a semantic solution to all the human created suffering on this planet. And I know <laughs> for Cynthia, she got she got a copy of a, one of the chapters of the book I'm writing now, which incidentally is called Surrendering oh, Into Soul. And a, will, you, will, you, will you bring it into what we just saw you know, just a little bit more? Please? Well, it's connected because it's a okay. continuation. This is a continuation. Okay. All right. That's, that part of. That's good. Okay. You got that context. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe... Other people don't see it. I see so many connections here. For example, surrendering into soul. I forget who it was. One of the speakers was talking about, I, I don't remember the exact words, but again, it was probably Michael Bernard Beckwith connecting into soul, which to me is a living, breathing energy that flows through you. And I think Marianne Williamson was talking about that. I think but, Oscar Mirakasada also brought it in. I'm sorry? I think Dr. Mira Casada also brought it. He in. may have. He may he have. Yes. So okay, I'll stop talking now, and I'll just put the website in the chat. Yeah, please share that because it is wonderful work, and I do want folks to know about it. But I just want we just have a little bit of time. So anyone else? I think Pamela, you had your hand up. Yes, I love the part where she said, you know, radical, be radical, <laughs> and where we, ha we have yep, to yep. have enough audacity to just show up as the divine divas and devos that we are, and just be out there just as much as possible. I, I just love the idea of like a radical authenticity and radical expression of the love and divinity that we are. Yeah, and the uh, the dancing uh, reminded me of the cover of your book. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you might want to unmute yourself or you might want to put that in the chat as well, yeah. because as, as Janet said, you know, all of this that we're doing is a continuation of that. 
And um, uh, so, so much was birthed then. At the time, you know, yes. I was, and I share Barbara's yeah. birthday. I have the same birthday. Really? You do? Well, happy yesterday. yesterday. Happy yes. Wow. <laughs> Another Sagittarius. Awesome. Great. Who else would like to jump in here? Yeah. Just have a little bit more time. I will. Okay. Cynthia. So first of all, I miss uh, uh, Ricky and the Revs dreadlocks very much yeah. Yeah. Uh, over the last few years. But thank you, God, we have Bob now as a Renaissance man to kind of fill in that need. I mean, I love guys with long hair, but... I, I haven't ever heard that term before, planetary Pentecost. We should oh. be using that. I love that. Planetary Pentecost. Wow. Spirit rising. Wow. I like that. And don't deny your own divinity and see it in others. If we could just do that, <laughs> even partly, wow, right there. Don't deny your own divinity and see it in others. And then I like the word fabulosity too. <laughs> fabulosity. We got to get with our groove, get our fabulosity going, guys. <laughs> well, I, don't know, I don't know if you all re remember or read this book, but it was Birth 2012 and Beyond, Humanity's Great Shift to the Age of Conscious Evolution. And so when Bob probably put in the notes there about the welcoming, you know, committee. the welcoming committee that if aliens came to the earth and they said, take me to your leader, Barbara was going to take them to these 12 people that, and each one of them wrote a chapter in this book. And um, what I love about that, think about Pentecostal, the number 12, and think mm -hmm. about the apostles. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all inspired disciples of this message of oneness and unity and no separation or fear. And it's an honor to be here, uh, be a part of this group. And I'm thankful that people still show up you know, on Thursday nights when we have fabulous conversations. It's kind of like uh, if, if everybody just went Meatless Monday, didn't have to, everybody had, doesn't have to be a vegetarian, but Meatless Monday, what impact that would have on the world? What if uh, we took your advice and, uh, and saw the divinity in everyone? If everyone, at least once a week for one day, saw the divinity in everyone else, what a step forward. Wow. Yeah. Cool. yeah just a little. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to jump in? Yeah. I just dearly love Marianne Williamson and I love the charge to just go kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was amazing. We were, you know, it was just. Yeah, I'll never forget her on the stage with all those other Democratic presidential candidates. Oh. And, you know, they're talking about food, you know, medicine and Medicare and stuff like that. It's just hold it. Why don't we just talk about why we have this problem? It's our food. Why are we all sick? <laughs> yeah, she just tells it. She's, she tells it like it is. But, uh, I didn't realize how short she was until um, Noelle and I spent a fair amount of time those two days up in the green room and in the back room preparing things and uh, helping out in the back corners. And um, we were always down when somebody was on the stage, but um, I followed her down the steps from the green room. I didn't realize how short she is. She is teeny, but when she's on the stage, she Six is feet. huge. Yeah, <laughs> and, and her political group was Sister Giant, right. and she means it too, you know? Right. So, um, anyway. Are these people still around? I haven't seen them for a while. Oh yeah. Well, they're all around, sure. And uh, you know, when I see okay. some of the people that are in uh, the others that I mentioned in the chat that were part of the welcoming committee that were not there, uh, Dot Maver and uh, Lynn Twist of Pachamama mm -hmm. Alliance and Lynn McTagger, uh, what's mm -hmm. that called, uh, of eight? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Circles of eight. Circles of eight uh, that are that were doing before and are doing since. Amazing, amazing spreading of light to the world. In teaching, that maybe yeah. was very, very involved in in uh, you know, all everything that goes on at Unity Earth. Yeah, two days ago we were just on a, we're with a, a wonderful, all. beautiful yeah. celebration of uh, the longest night. The longest night, she was very yeah. in her uh, golden silent moment. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that was Earl. that was amazing. Yeah. So yeah, Urban Laszlo, all of them. Yeah, they're still. I know they're involved with the Unity Earth uh, uh, 
the you know the earth group uh, Tex had to, to jump off. It looks like uh, we have Mary and Head here. Mary and Glenn and Head were actually, okay, so we were neighbors of Barbara's at Sunrise Ranch for what, two and a half years, almost three years. We we're in our RV and she was a little townhouse right across the way. But Mary and Glenn, you were roommates with her for how many years? She lived in our home for a year. A for year. A year. <laughs> yeah. And you co wrote a book? Yes, we wrote a book, The Suprasexual Revolution. Yay. <laughs> and I think you came up with that term, didn't you? The super sex, super sex. No, 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 no. That no. was no, that was Barbara's term. <laughs> Barbara. No, but she came up with revolutionary agreements, which I wrote a book about after that. <laughs> so, oh, right. okay. So you just... had it back, the terms <laughs> backwards. Uh, what, uh, what, what reflections do you share on the snapshot of 2012 for you two? and where we are today, any, any reflection? Well, you know, I think we see what we believe. So Glenn and I were just having a side conversation <laughs> about, well, no has anything changed? And well, yeah, it has for us. And so if I look out there, <laughs> you know, the nervous system of our planet is, connected to our media. So if we look out there, it doesn't look like anything's changed, but if we look in here and we look at our lives and our communities, then yeah, I think we're on the trajectory. Well said. Well, well said. I can just say that looking back on my notes where I underlined things when I read this book, I'm going like, you had no idea what you were reading, did you? <laughs> No, <laughs> it's like you can watch a movie over again and go, I didn't see that the first time. And so, uh, yeah, it's really a delight. I am going to have to uh, read that again, but it is, uh, yeah, so so it's a whole new level, whole new level. That, that and, that's part of what it is for us, too. At the back, back of this book, they have resources for the birth, uh, shift network allies, uh, sh uh, affiliated organizations. I realized, again, when I read this then, uh, I didn't know these different movements and organizations, and now we're very, very involved and aware of and engaged with about ninety percent. About ninety percent of the ones that we're in are in here that we didn't even know before. And for me, it was a, um, a moment of uh, opening my world, really, to all of you, and because I see the thread, the through thread, of uh, of Barbara saying to Noelle and I, "You need to meet Marion and Glenn Head, and vice versa." And the through line in our life of the hundreds and hundreds of people of evolutionary light bringers that include all of you has just enriched us uh, so tremendously. And so we know that it was significant in our personal spiritual journey, uh, but we also recognize the collective that that all of that is because all of us, all of us are. Well, I, I will tell one other little story and then we, we can probably close um, if anybody else doesn't have anything to say, but I, Robin mentioned that she put, she worked so hard on this project. My goodness, she was orchestrating. She was dealing with people. So she, she worked was, for the shift network. Yeah, she worked for the shift network. So she was Stephen Dynan's right-hand person and getting all the calls. We didn't have Zoom then, blah, 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 the retreats, the this, the that. And so she said, she didn't see all this. Well, we didn't see it either because we were in the room at Agape and the first day we're up there stuffing gift bags for all the celebrities. And uh, they let us down there, you know, when, when things started. And the second day, you know, we, we uh, participated. In fact, the next, uh, next week you might see us dancing, but uh, that's not the important part. So when we got this, we were going like, we never saw any of this because as you know, it's coming in broadcast from all over the, all over literally from all over the planet. So maybe that's why Stephen, you know, uh, thought we should have a, a copy of this. We're like, wow, was that what happened? And uh, and yeah, and uh, Bruce Lipton, I remember him being uh, uh, interviewed one time. We saw him speak and uh, he said, you know, when birth 2012 happened, I thought, eh, you know, and, and somebody in our a mentors group said, well, you know, Barbara afterwards kind of went into a depression. She was going like, where's the baby? because her expectations of what would happen that next day. And she actually went into, went into a depression. And um, so uh, Bruce Lipton was going like, eh, you know, what, uh, what really happened? And then as things 
started to happen. He's going like, wow, things are really happening. You know, and so I want to congratulate us all and pat us all on the back. You know, many things are happening and I think for the good. And as, as we amp up our good, yeah, that's going to bring some other, that's going to bring some other ugliness and challenges for us. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, just as Lisa and all of them inspire me to just say, we got to keep kicking ass. You know? <laughs> we just got to keep on keeping on. But. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anyone has a final reflection or whether we should close this down or, okay, Janet Gunn. I would, I, that's why I'm so excited about this too, because thanks to you and Bob who came through Denver and introduced me to three different groups that day, I went to three different birth 2012 events right. and, and saw very little of the actual, uh, transmission of this i saw snips of it in different events and to have it put together like this i'm really surprised that steve dinan hasn't picked up on the opportunity to make some money with it <laughs> because <laughs> hey you never know you never know and and the whole from the minute i well i learned about barbara through neil donald or through humanities teams um one this day and and from the minute i heard her name my life has become so amazing with all the friends that i've made and and all of the people that she introduced us to and all the the evolution in myself has been tremendous and i know that all of that plant seeds right now i'm kind of incubating but <laughs> But we've all, you know, we've all had these seeds planted in us and, and we grow it. So I, God's timing has never been quite as fast as mine, but I have no doubt now with divine right action and divine right being that this is happening. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Has anyone uh, written a book about like the last nine years or 10 years and what has happened? Because I think a lot has happened in the planet. No, no, no. no, I would say not that I'm aware of focused on 2012, therefore 